Welcome back to Italy, where our visit to the country's legendary icons of luxury brings us to Chianti, in the heart of Tuscany, and to the new winery and headquarters of the oldest, largest, and most revered winemaking company in Italy, Marchesi Antinori, now in the hands of the 26th generation of the noble Florentine family. No, your eyes aren't playing any tricks on you. I know this looks like a vineyard, but actually I'm standing on the rooftop. Yes, the rooftop of Antinori's winery and headquarters here in Tuscany. The Antinori nel Chianti Classico estate is a modern state-of-the-art winery built amidst the historic landscape of Tuscany and partly underneath vineyards of Sangiovese grapes that form the backbone of the region's world-famous wine, Chianti. I've been to a lot of wineries in my lifetime and I have to say this has got to be the most beautiful one I've ever seen, at least among the more modern wineries in the world. It's the work of the architect Marco Casamonti. And here's the thing, it was actually his very first major work. Now he's a legend after building the Antinori Winery. The landmark property was made to reflect the family's respect for the land of their birth. Built with locally sourced materials using sustainable architectural design, the winery blends with the landscape seamlessly. Imagine being surrounded by vineyards. In fact, behind that glass wall with the reflection of the vineyards are the offices of Antinori. What a beautiful environment to work in. If I worked here, I'd even work on weekends. The winery also houses a museum that traces the Florentine family's history and the wine-making tradition that began in 1385 and has remained uninterrupted within the family for six centuries, despite wars and plagues, and most recently, the crisis of the 1970s, when the reputation and quality of Chianti, back then a blend of inferior grapes and outdated techniques, underwent global scrutiny. If the Chianti Classico in the basket represents the lowest point of Chianti, well, this bottle over here, the Tignanello from 1971, a very rare vintage, by the way, represents the renaissance, so to speak, of not just the Sangiovese grape, but of Tuscan winemaking in general. To see how far wines from Antinori have improved since the crisis, you can purchase a bottle of Tignanello or any of the other wines produced in the various Antinori estates across Tuscany. Just to give you an idea of the elite status of Antinori in the wine world, Antinori belongs to the Primum Familiae Vini. It's an association of family-owned wineries. As you can see, their Tinanello sits alongside the most precious wines and grand crew from the historic family estates of Europe. Not all the wines of Antinori are produced in this winery, including the super Tuscans like Tignanello and Solaya. But here's the thing, you can actually taste it in the gift shop. So let's do that. Can I have some, uh, yes, the Tignanello. This wine started a revolution by disregarding the old regulations for making Chianti Classico blending French Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc with a local Sangiovese grape instead. The very first vintage of Tignanello was 1971. And back in the day, this was a crazy idea, breaking all the rules. Antinori Solaya followed in 1978 this time with a majority Cabernet Sauvignon in the blend. Award-winning wines that brought back prestige to Italy. You don't need Robert Parker or James Suckling to tell you this is 100 points. You can tell. It is beautiful. A 
26th generation, represented by the three daughters of Piero Antinori, had their father's foresight to thank for managing Italy's most influential wine company. So all of this new category of Super Tuscan started in that moment, and it became the big moment for Italian wines. But my father was really the first one that had this braveness and this sense of vision. And that's when things started to turn around. That's when things Not started to turn around. Not just for Antinori, but for the entire Chianti yes, region. Yes, yes. Tell Chianti me about that. Chianti I mean, Classico. The, the, the evolution now, the respect that suddenly Well, this many other had. people started to produce wines in a different way. They started to invest uh, in uh, making um, better uh, clonal selection in vineyards, making uh, new wineries, making, uh, taking the use of barrel, introducing new grape varieties, trying new wines. So, uh, you know, people started to do different things to experiment more. A tour of the subterranean cellars allows you to see Piero Antinori's innovative zeal in person. The sustainable design, the natural lighting, the application of soft pressing and gravity flow vinification, and the use of oak barriques and casks may seem de rigueur by today's standards. But the Antinoris can be largely credited for introducing these innovations in Italy. Few things are better than the smell of fine wine maturing in oak. Mm. Although I can think of something even better. Tasting the wine, which is exactly what that group is doing up there. What a beautiful way to enjoy wine. Overlooking all these barrels of fine Chianti Classico. It's a wine lover's dream. Only two of Antinori's Chianti Classico wines are cellared here, one of which Allegra wants me to taste. Oh, okay. That's a 2015? Yeah, 2015. Villa Antinori has always been the wine that my family was famous for. Mm -hmm. In the sense it was the wine coming from the Villa Antinori, mm -hmm. that at the beginning it wasn't really it was in, um, in the era of Candici, mm -hmm. and then today it's represented from um, the, the house of Tignana mm -hmm. Illa. It's Together where we with are Pepoli, right now. It's yes. where we are. So, so this is you know, the best representation a, of the terroir we were yes, speaking Yes, because we are taking the grapes for this wine from our estates in Chianti Classico. Mm -hmm. The Chianti Classico Riserva is made almost entirely from the local Sangiovese variety, from the hills around the winery, and matured in French oak to produce a vibrant, ruby-colored wine with hints of cherry and red berries. This is really the expression of what we think is a real um, Chianti Classico uh, and with a, re a reinterpretation okay. of the Chianti Classico with a modern style. If the Villa Antinori represents evolution, this next wine epitomizes a spirit of experimentation. Il Bruschato from the precious Guada Altasso estate in Bolgiri is from the same area where the iconic Sassicaia and Ornelaya wines owned by their cousins are made. So there's no Sangiovese here. It's on the beach. Bolgiri is the area on the beach between Livorno and Grosseto. We own 320 hectares there of vineyards and a thousand of land. It's a wine that uh, represents very well the territory. It's a very hot territory. So the wines are like this, very rich, very black. They have blackberry, they have balsamic, they have whatever is more the style of uh, Bordeaux style wines. Over a typical Tuscan lunch and more glasses of their wine, the Marquesa Antinori and I continue our conversation about the future of the company while enjoying the scenery from the terrace of Rinuccio 1180, the restaurant named after the 12th century founder of their dynasty. So, Allegra, all eyes are on your generation now uh, on how and what you're going to do with the legacy of the Antinori winemaking tradition. and. What does it feel like? I mean, all this responsibility to carry the centuries-old tradition of winemaking. Well, it's a matter of pride, most of all, that you're really you know, grateful to whoever has done things before to pass it on to you. 
uh, it's also a matter of knowing that there are some values as well that are transferred generation after generation. He always says there are four P's uh, to that made all the company work, which is passion, patience, okay. prudence, okay. and people, and person, and product. So five. So five now. Five now. So, you know, he believes that the product, and this we know very well, is the most important thing. So we're obsession, obsessionate about making a product which is represent, which has got personality, mm -hmm. which represents Antinori, our style. Indeed, Marchesi Antinori, like Salvatore Ferragamo and Ferrari, are brands that share much more than just the names of their founders, but their passion for craftsmanship, for innovation, and perfection. Icons of luxury that represent the creative spirit of Italy. And that's all for this episode of Executive Class. I'm David Saldran. Thanks for watching.